Well, hello. Episode 171 of the Confident Live Marketing Show. My name's Ian Anderson Gray. Welcome. Today is a very exciting day because we are talking about the elephant in the room. Well, it's been the elephant in the room probably over the last 171 episodes, and that is perfectionism, or should I say recovering perfectionism, and how you can get over that, how you can be consistent, create amazing content. Uh, and I have the master of this. I've been so inspired by all his content and his workflows and how he has got over his perfectionism. Not that perfectionism is always bad, as I, I've, I've seen him say, but uh, sometimes it can get in the way. And uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. We have the amazing Alec Johnson in the house. Great to see you, Alec. How are you doing? Um, very well, thank you. Great to be here. Thanks for thanks for inviting me, Ian. <laughs> oh, it's it's a pleasure. I'm it's, the honour is all mine. Seriously, I, because I, I, as I said to you before, I've been I've been getting a, a little bit addicted to your YouTube channel <laughs> um, and binging on it because uh, you've got so much amazing content there um, uh, to do with well, ecom live and e and stream decks and and all this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, How, when did you start your YouTube channel? Because it, it's you've not been doing this. I don't get the impression you've been doing this for, for that long, but you've really grown no. the channel. Yeah, it was May uh, May last year. So uh, just just come up to my, uh, just past my one year anniversary. So it was the 14th of May was my first kind of, my first live stream, which was my first video. And uh, then, yeah, I, I aimed to do 100 videos in my first 100 days. Uh, I did that. And then I aimed to extend it to 365 videos in my first year. I didn't quite meet, uh, meet that because a few other things got in the way <laughs> that uh, took my time, but hey, I'm not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. It's kind yeah. of interesting in a way because, like, the uh, you've got you set these really big goals. Do you think that is like? Uh, I, well, I don't really don't really want to get into this now because um, we haven't started the podcast. But maybe maybe I'll ask you that later. But it, there's um, sometimes um, uh, you know these big goals can uh, be good for perfectionism or, or not so good. But uh, you're dialing in from. Thailand. Where, t tell us where in Thailand and tell us a little bit about uh, where you're from. So I'm from the UK originally, in case you uh, couldn't tell <laughs> <laughs> by my accent, uh, from North Staffordshire, but then I've been living in uh, Thailand for 16 years. I'm in a little town called Nong Kai, which is uh, on the border between Thailand and Laos on the Mekong River. Nice little uh, quiet backwater town <laughs> away from the uh, the crowd. So uh, yeah, as I say, been here for 16 years and uh, Absolutely love it. It's a wonderful, wonderful place to be and to raise kids as well. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds beautiful. So, and uh, I'm kind of, I'm trying not to be jealous, but I've, I've just been in Florida so, <laughs> like, for a week. So I, I think it's all right. Um, well, if well, you I just, had, I, <laughs> sorry, carry on. I, I had FOMO with the, with that uh, that event. Oh. I, I'd wish I'd been able to be there as well. It looked like a, oh, a great event. I know. <laughs> it's it's hard. The whole, I, I really try not to do FOMO because, um, it. but sometimes it's really hard. Like uh, the social media marketing world, uh, yep. back in whenever it was and it was the first time I've not been since 2015 and seeing all my friends there but um yeah it's yeah but but you know things things are starting to open up and we hopefully start to to come to more conferences and events and things like that but uh, uh anyway if you have just joined welcome I can see we've got some uh, live people watching uh, I've not been live for a probably about uh, two weeks now. So it's getting back into the scheme of things. Um, but if you are watching on uh, Alex channels uh, on Tech One Tech, welcome. You might be wondering who on earth I am. I'm Ian Anderson Gray. Uh, this is the Confident Live Marketing Show. And I've got the fabulous Alex Johnson on. We're going to be talking about um, workflows to conquer your recovering perfectionism. So I'm looking forward to that. I think it's time to get on with the show. Um, so I'm going to press record on the podcast machine. And uh, let's do it. But if you're watching, let us know where in the world you're watching from. And I'd also love to know if you are a recovering perfectionist. Let us know. Let's be, uh, we'll be with you just after this. Hello and welcome to the Confident Live Marketing Show. My name's Ian Ansegray. And in this episode of the Confident Live Marketing Show, we are talking about recovering perfectionism and some workflows to conquer that, to create consistent content. I've got a fabulous guest on the show, Alec Johnson. Let's get on with the show now. Welcome to the Confident Live Marketing Show with Ian Anderson Gray. 
helping you level up your impact, authority, and profits through the power of confident live video. Optimize your mindset and communication and increase your confidence in front of the camera. Get confident with the tech and gear and get confident with the content, content and, and marketing. marketing. Together, we can go live! Well, hello, Ian Anson Gray here. I'm so excited to be here. It's been about a couple of weeks since I've last went live. I've been in Orlando, Florida at VidFest. I'm trying not to make my guest today feel too much FOMO. Um, we were talking about FOMO just before we started, but uh, that was fabulous. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the next episode, which will probably be next week if you're watching live. Uh, or next Friday if you're listening to the podcast. That was VidFest. It was fantastic. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you haven't come across my podcast before, just go to iag.me forward slash podcast. It's the Confident Live Marketing Podcast, and we go um, out every single Friday. The live show normally goes out every Tuesday and Thursday, but, well, I've been away, so hopefully you'll forgive me. But... I'm excited because today I have a fantastic guest. So you're not just having to listen to me today. Uh, and my guest shares a problem that I really struggle with, and that is perfectionism. Well, it was a problem because now we don't call ourselves perfectionists. We call ourselves recovering perfectionists. And we're going to be talking about workflows on how to create consistent content. So I'm excited to be bringing in today the amazing Alec Johnson. I'm so excited. He has a diverse background in the fields of aeronautical engineering, architectural design and construction, graphic design, algorithmic trading, video production and consultancy. Quite varied, but all have a common thread. Problem solving. Love that. Specifically using the latest tools and tech to get the job done perfectly. Oh, I shouldn't say perfectly, efficiently. Why did I say that? Anyway, welcome to the show, Alec. And I can't find, where's my cheering sound? Oh, talking about recovering <laughs> perfectionism, where's it all gone? Anyway, thank you. there's normally much. a cheering sound at this point, but um, I'll just just imagine the, the crowd's cheering. <laughs> How are you doing, Alec? <laughs> I'm very good, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, for having me on. It's a pleasure to, to be here. Oh, it's, it's awesome. Um, and as I was saying just before uh, we started recording, I'm a massive fan of, of your content, uh, your YouTube channel I've been addicted to. So this is Take One Tech. If you uh, are watching or listening, just uh, search for Take One Tech on YouTube. And it's all to do with, well, I mean, how would you describe your YouTube channel, Alec? Uh, well, it's all about uh, the, way, the way I started it was it was intended to be all about the applications and things that I use on my Mac to help me get my things done in my work. But then the the tool that I started using to make my videos was Ecamm Live and the Stream Deck, and they became kind of two of my favorite tools. And so the majority of the videos seem to have been on on that subject rather than the like Mac automation and things like that. So it's probably about 50-50 uh, yeah. productivity and automation and then the live streaming and uh, Ecamm Live stuff. Yeah, definitely. So if you're into Ecamm Live, if you're into Stream Decks, but also like, I, I mean, there are some more geeky uh, episodes. So uh, using automation. So there's uh, um, not Text Expander. What's the one? It's uh, Mac, uh, uh, Keyboard Maestro. Key is the keyboard one. Maestro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and Keyboard Maestro, I, I, I've had it for probably two and a bit years, but have I kind of like used it or opened it? Yeah, I kind of open it and I, I get... <laughs> <laughs> like anxiety because it's but uh, it's you've got daunting. some great videos yeah it's a bit daunting but it's great and uh, I found that really helpful so um I'd love to know how you got into this you, you've had your YouTube channel for a bit but uh, you know you've got as I said as I was reading your bio you've got a really um, yeah, varied background you were in the UK you're now in in Thailand beautiful Thailand and um yeah t tell us a little bit about your journey of, of how you what you did and how you got to Thailand and, and what you you're doing today and then we'll talk about we'll, we'll dig into the whole perfectionism thing <laughs> okie dokie <laughs> uh, so yeah I moved to Thailand uh, 16 16 years ago I came on a, uh, a diving holiday for I was here for uh, just about a month something like that um, but then realized I'd be able to work from here just as easily as I could from uh, the UK potentially so uh, so moved over it's a lovely country for anyone who hasn't been uh lovely food lovely weather lovely people uh i can't say enough good about it and coming from a rather rainy <laughs> uk as i did it was uh, it was a nice uh, nice change so uh yeah i've got a 
it's it's hard to really nail down you know when people say what do you do because uh, like if you heard in the bio there's quite a, quite a diverse background there in uh, aeronautical engineering was what i studied at university um but then uh, graphic design uh architectural design all these sorts of things as well i've also done there they it all comes down to this uh, design and problem solving though that's kind of what i uh, what i i sort of nail them all down to mm. um but in uh, recent times i've been involved in a couple of companies that i'm a partner in where i've been needing to make training materials so uh, wanting to create course content and i initially started doing that the uh, the traditional way <laughs> of filming the course content and then editing it but uh, i was my own worst enemy when it came to editing really because i uh, if i knew that i could retake things i would take lots of uh, lots of different takes and then trying to stitch them all together in the edit would just end up being a, a, bit, a bit of a nightmare. So I thought that there must be a better way of doing it. And uh, first tried out OBS, which is a um, uh, open broadcast open broadcast software <laughs> to allow you to uh, record direct to, ta uh, to tape as it were and uh, create different scenes and things like that. But uh, I probably pulled out my last few hairs using that uh, and then discovered Ecamm Live just uh, sort of by chance watching a edition of Matt Break Weekly and Doc Rock was on there talking about it. And uh, that's how I discovered it just over a year ago. And it's basically transformed the way that I create course content. And so I wanted to practice the uh, process of creating videos in one take. And so I thought, well, if I start a YouTube channel <laughs> and get into the habit of posting stuff consistently to there, then that will uh, that will help me sort of sharpen the saw as it were in terms of uh, getting better at that skill of producing videos so that then that would translate over into all the uh, the course content I I make and that can be done a lot more efficiently <laughs> so that's that's how I came to be doing mm. YouTube content that's awesome and yeah uh, we could, could have talk all about that uh massive fan of Ecom Live on the show we've had Doc Rock on the show as well and Katie and get Ken and Glenn who are the yeah. co-founders of Ecom we've had them on the show before uh, but you know, if if you're not a Mac user, you know we don't hate you. I, I was a PC user for for many years, and there are there are other tools out there that can help. I mean, OBS is not the easiest and, and most user friendly, but it's certainly possible to do some of the things that we're going to be talking about today using OBS. Oh, sure. But um, it's a lot cheaper to buy a Mac these days, and I I've got a, an M1 Mac Mini, which um, you know I've, I've got a, a MacBook Pro, but um, actually my main computer these days is is an M1 Mac Mini, and it it just is amazing. So um, it's it's definitely possible to do that. So I love I love uh, I, I love um, hearing people's uh, kind of stories because so often I I, I think we, we we have this feeling that we've all got like a plan that um, we we did one thing that which led to another <laughs> thing and it's all it was all planned. So you, like Alec, you knew exactly what you'd be doing like fifteen years ago, and no, that does <laughs> it doesn't happen that way. Yeah. Um, but all of stuff, I'm sure you'd agree with this, like all of your background, like the engineering and the graphic design and all this kind of stuff and the business. I mean, there's a huge amount of business stuff that has really helped to where you are today. It's, it, there has been a progression. It's not been necessarily planned, but, um, so the problem solving is, is really interesting. I, 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 I very much, um, into that as well, but tell us a little bit about perfectionism. I know that you, there are pros and cons with this, but how has perfectionism in the past kind of manifested itself for you uh, maybe talk about some of the pros and cons with that because it's not all bad but uh, obviously not at all. yeah but but there are some bad sides to it <laughs> yeah I, I always say you know it's better to strive for perfection than strive for mediocrity you know if you fall short of perfectionism then you're still going to be further along than uh you know, Mr. or Mrs. Average. <laughs> so I definitely think that it's a, it's a good thing. And I think that that has been instilled in me from, you know, the, the, the jobs that I've done. So for example, the aeronautical engineering, you don't want to say, well, it's about right. <laughs> and the first job that I had was working for a missile defense contractor. So designing guidance systems for missiles. You don't want to say, well, it's going to get roughly to the target. You know, everything there has to be, <laughs> you know, military precision. So it's, I think that part of the, the sort of precision and perfectionism in me has come from the different roles I've done. Uh, the, one of the, the things that I did when I came to Thailand was set up an architectural design and construction company. So we were building really sort of high spec uh, houses. And, you know, somebody comes to you with a dream, I would design them their house and then oversee the management of, you know, the, the building of it. Um, I can't really turn around to them when we're handing the keys over and say, well, do you know what? This is almost perfect. <laughs> it's always been, you know, a, a real sort of, um, uh, it's not a burden. It's an absolute pleasure to to deliver something that's of really high quality to somebody. But there is that that sense that you know this has got to be perfect. You know, when somebody walks through the door, they need to see 
their dream home <laughs> realized, not, you know, part of a dream home. So I think that the things that I've done in the past uh, have sort of driven that that perfectionism in me. Um, but what can happen then if I'm my own client, I often have higher standards. Um, I, I set higher standards for myself than um, than I would expect of others. So if I'm getting somebody, you know, a building contractor to do some building work, then I would set a higher standard for myself doing it than for somebody else. If that if that makes sense, <laughs> I'm too self critical of my own, my own uh, work. I guess is the the thing. Mm. Uh, and so the the negative of that is obviously if you feel like it's not quite ready, I just need to do a bit more on it, and it's not quite ready to to ship yet, as it were. Um, so that's the uh, that's that's the recovering perfectionist part in me is just wanting to get over that sense of I need to just make it that little bit better before I release something. It's you know rather than just actually getting it out there. I think that's the key. It's if it stops you from actually starting or creating in the first place. And I know that's been the case for me. You know, it, you know, I'm, I'm going to be totally honest and transparent. That is still an issue for me on YouTube. And you have really inspired me with with the one take thing, which we'll we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, because I think what we tend to, what we are often do, you're, you're you're very right in that we have a higher standard than we would assume that we would for other people and, and you go, go on YouTube and the number of like videos that I watch that I find really really helpful and they're taken on a smartphone you know because mm -hmm. ultimately what I'm wanting I'm wanting some information and it doesn't necessarily have to be on a, like a really like high-end camera like you're using or I'm using uh, with a fancy microphone um, but I, I stopped I, I, I and I didn't create content because I thought I needed to have like the best tech or I needed mm -hmm. to have everything sorted do you think part of it is it's kind of well maybe not necessarily aiming for perfection but you're you're you if you start very mediocre but you you have a goal to get better and you're getting towards that goal of not you know maybe 90 percent perfect you're getting there one step at a time. That's that, that's the aim that we're getting better and better and better each time. As mm -hmm. long as you have that in 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 uh, in your mind, do you think that's the right attitude? Yes, I mean, I, I've this is totally a you know a journey of of self improvement for me as much as it is for you know making educational style you know tutorial style videos as well. It's I'm I'm learning through it all as well. And so whilst I do the like the recorded videos, my weekly live streams that I do tend to be more sort of uh, me talking about the process of what I'm doing. So, you know, it was tracking the the progress towards my different goals that I was having and things like that. And so it is more kind of uh, me just being open about this is where I am, this is what I'm doing. And, you know, this is this is the progress I've made and sharing the things that I'd learned along the way. So it's definitely a process of uh, improvement, uh, self-improvement. Um, but I also don't quite agree when some people say, oh, if you if you want to become a creator, just get pick up your phone and start now. Like just literally just go go live right now because i think that it's a case of setting a sort of reasonable starting point that you're happy with even if it isn't absolutely perfect and so when i started my channel um the first video that i did did have a certain level of uh polish to it you know it wasn't a case of i just picked up the phone and you know i spent a month knowing that i was going to go and do my first you know live stream whatever day it was i gave myself a month to get things set up so setting up the channel setting up the website setting up the the scenes in ecamm live for example and things like that so i do believe that there should be some planning but the thing that i was uh, that i was conscious of was i set the date of when i was going to start and if i wasn't quite ready then then i was going to go anyway <laughs> so uh, just giving myself that that bit of freedom to say right well i'm, I'm happy if i'm not entirely happy with it <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, the planning is the most important thing. It's it's kind of the boring mm -hmm. bit, and and I think sometimes like people, like the planning in a sense requires you to think, and thinking can make you scared, particularly with live video, because you you, you know you're just about to go live, and and so so sometimes that planning can get in the way. But you're absolutely right. You you need that time to check the tech, just make sure that everything's working, and that you know what you're going to talk about. But then you know, don't procrastinate. You need you do need to press the button. Uh, yeah, you can and you can you can like do some test lives, you, you know, uh, go live at a Facebook group or something. Um, and I suppose the the upside is when you first go live, when you're probably going to make the mistakes and you know, say, oh, and I still stumble over my words. Um, but 
uh, at least at the beginning, you're probably not going to have many many people watching. So there is that. And <laughs> over time, as you get yeah. better and better, hopefully you'll get more and more people watching you. Uh, Mel Bridger is in the house. Great to see you, Mel. Always lovely to see you. He says, love the hoodie. And uh, I think I'm going to have to order the... So for podcast listeners, Alec is wearing a fantastic hoodie, Recovering Perfectionist. Love that. <laughs> oh, and a cap yeah, as well. That. <laughs> That's probably a bit overkill though, isn't it? <laughs> it is a little bit overkill, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Okay, so I think we've I think we've defined what a Recovering Perfectionist is. Um, and I think that many of us struggle with it. And it's not that we shouldn't be striving for... I, I hes- hesitate to say we that we should strive for perfection, but we should at least strive to get better each time. Uh, mm-hmm. I want to know about your process. So you're using Ecamm Live. Um, let, let's start off with, let's not talk about your, your live um, strategy. Uh, we'll come on to that. But I want to know about how you create your YouTube videos because I think you said that in the first 100 days of, of setting up a YouTube channel, you did something mad at like, a hundred videos in a hundred days. I mean, that just blows my mind. I mean, for me, one video in one week, <laughs> be like, that would be momentous. No, not quite. But uh, so tell us a little bit about your, your process. And, and I'm also interested, like, did you, did you honestly think you were going to do the hundred in, in, in that first hundred days? Um, I I did I did think I was going to hit that target because I'd sort of done you know that that month that I spent before uh, starting the you know before my first live I had um I'd already sort of planned out the the list of videos I'm never short of videos to make so uh you know I've got a list now that's well over 150 200 I think now that I've got still to make so I'm never short of videos and there's new ones being added uh, to it all the time so I wasn't really worried about the content um and because I'd been you know sort of Uh, trying out different things in terms of, you know, the scenes that I was going to have and how I was going to control everything with the stream deck as well. I knew that it was, uh, it was, it should, it should be possible. (laughs) And my approach to making the, uh, the videos is, um, so I'd get, I get up pretty early. So I normally wake up at three o'clock, do my sort of morning meditation, journaling and uh, coffee, uh, three till four. And then four until six was normally my uh, kind of education time, if you like, when I'd be learning something or reading something um, before the kids get up. So uh, the kids normally get up at six or or seven. So I had these two quiet hours of uh, uh, of me time, which was normally for, like I say, self-development. So that's the time that I allotted to do my YouTube stuff because I still have other stuff going on during the day. So in that two hours, uh, my sort of workflow for that was that I would sit down at the computer, pick one of the videos that I was going to make. And they're all about all of the videos are about some piece of software or equipment that I'm using that I know, you know, pretty much inside out anyway. So the style of the videos is always as if I was sitting down and telling a friend or colleague or whoever how to use it. So that's the my sort of approach to it is I'm just going to sit and tell a friend how to use it. <laughs> so in the uh, that, that sort of two hours, it's a case of, you know, maybe set the screen up. I've got a number of different shortcuts to position things on screen where they they all need to be. Uh, and then I would you know, load up whatever program it was going to be and do the demo. Uh, my videos averaged out at about 30 minutes. So then there'll be like a 30 minute video. And then at the end of the recording, you know, make a thumbnail and upload it. So it was in that two hour window that I had every morning that I was uh, that I was creating my uh, my my videos. That's really interesting. The the, the time scale thing. Uh, I mean, well, we're going to come on to the 3 a.m. thing in a minute because that's like, oh my goodness, 3 a.m. But you have this like short time window and I've found a really productive time for me is like if I'm taking my kids to like choir practice or dancing or swimming, I've got this hour in the car and I wouldn't be able to produce like a video within the car. But I, I find that if I'm editing, I can, I can, because I know that I've only got that short amount of time. So it's amazing having that, that kind of like, in a sense, it's like an artificial deadline that you've set yourself. Mm-hmm. That you have to do, um, but you do go to bed early, don't you? So the three, the yep. three a.m. <laughs> um, it's like, not like I'm living on three hours sleep or anything like that. It's uh, yeah, yeah, I normally go to bed sort of eight or nine ish, something like that. So I'm, yeah, I'm getting yeah. a good uh, good eight hours in. <laughs> but it, but it's, it's a case of like finding a good time where there's time and the space, and you ha- and you've got this focus, which is so important. 
By the way, I can see Mel, Mel Bridger is saying, yes, let's get into the, t into the tech, which is what we're doing. And Doc Walk is in the house. He's saying, I am trying to sleep. And you two, you lot are making a, <laughs> making noise. I'm sorry, Doc, but uh, uh, you obviously heard us earlier talking about you. We've got somebody watching in a Facebook group. Uh, we unfortunately can't see who you are because Facebook, you know. Uh, good day, boys. If you, <laughs> if you want us to know who you are, just go to confident.live forward slash show my name. That's confident dot live forward slash show my name and uh, just give restream permission for us to to see that but um yeah so so that that's amazing so you, i'd love to know a little bit more about your process so for me if i'm creating a, a youtube video um i have to plan what i'm talking about um, i have to get everything set up uh and then uh, i i start recording i usually have a script as well uh, but it takes me a long time because I'm stopping and starting. I stumble over my words and then I edit it to death and it takes me ages. And I, who, who likes editing? Who likes watching themselves and editing <laughs> all those bits out? So you don't really do that. Um, or you, that if you do, then it's very minimal. Uh, tell us about your, like, your process of how you create a YouTube uh, video. Um, yeah, so it, there isn't any, any editing probably in... The 300 videos I did make, there was uh, so far, there's been, you know, a couple where, you know, somebody would walk in or there'd be a noise or something like that. So I'd literally just cut a little bit out. But apart from that, they're generally all uh, all just one take. Um, and it, I've got an idea, you know, with the video title that I've got, you know, of something that I want to demonstrate. I've got a very clear sort of purpose in terms of, you know, what aspect of it it is of an application or something like that that I'm going to be demonstrating. And I, yeah, I don't do any scripting either. I, I for for want of a better word, I wing it. <laughs> um, but um, the, the one bit that I do occasionally uh, mess up is like the, the very beginning of the video. So although it is technically, uh, it's one take, technically it's not always the first take. So uh, sometimes I'll start the video and the bit at the intro, you know, where you say this video is for you if you want to learn about X, Y, and Z, or today I'm going to be talking about this. That's the part that still doesn't quite come totally naturally to me. So I've got a little button on my stream deck that I press and it kind of resets everything. So it'll stop the recording, uh, go back, and you know, reset everything for Ecamm. So it's that first sort of, I would say 10 seconds. I've often done you know, multiple uh, takes of that just to get that first bit out of the way. But then when I'm actually talking about the thing, if it's something that I, I kind of know, then uh, I don't seem to have too much problem just, <laughs> just talking about it. Uh, it does mean that occasionally there's, you know, sometimes when I've made a video when I've missed something out, um, you know, that I meant to I say, or that, you know, I should have said, and I end up going back and uh, you know, adding it in the comments or making another video about it. But generally, uh, it's uh, it just all seems to come out from somewhere. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And, it, and you're so right. It's, it's that first bit. It's usually the first bit. And I find sometimes it's the last bit. Like at the end of my show, sometimes I forget what I, I mean. I normally have to say exactly the same each time. And I get sometimes I'm a little bit tired uh, at the end and I think uh what do I say but it's that it's usually that first bit isn't it because your brain goes to much yep. particularly with live but also with pre-recording so having that uh written out I think is important but I love that button that that's quite a, a cool hack on the stream deck you've got a video about this I'll try and link to it um I think you go through all the buttons on your on your stream deck and uh yeah yeah, I, I think I've said that I did binge on your YouTube video, so that was a good one. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, let's look at the the comments. Um, Katie Simpson is in the house. Great to see you, Katie. Um, yeah, we're still live. You, 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 you've not missed much. Well, you've missed some, but you can go back and watch later. And Mel has been very kind to share this into a fitness group, so lots of colleagues want to learn about going live. Yeah, definitely. Uh, live video is so um, so vital to lots of industries. We're going to talk about live in a minute. We're talking about creating pre-recorded video at the moment, uh, which can actually, in some, some ways, well, I think actually live video is e a lot easier once you get over that, um, you know, fear of the camera thing. Uh, and Katie feels the same about uh, YouTube and says, one take, wow, yeah. Um, and this is something I want to do. Doc says, I love editing. There's always one dog, <laughs> but I'm really fast at it. Um, he is uh, Katie really fast says, <laughs> yeah, Katie says the first 30 seconds is paramount. And uh, business growth ready says sleep eight hours, four hours firefighting, 18 hours work, uh, need more hours. Oh, uh, need the gym time also. It's just really difficult to get that, that balance sometimes in our lives as well. 
Yeah. Um, and we'll definitely, I'll definitely link to that video, Katie. No worries. I mean, I think I will say one thing, um, you know, business growth ready, that I think we've got, I think it's important. And Alec, I think you'd agree with this. You know, we should never compare ourselves to other people's like um, lives. Like not all of us, um, some of us have kids, some of us are, aren't married, Some, you know, uh, and you'll have different sure. like schedules. Sometimes you, you might have like a really very tiring job, uh, but you, maybe the weekends are the time when you can do that content creation. You know, you think you have to work out what, what is best for you. So we're certainly not saying that you need to get up at 3 a.m. to be productive. I know, <laughs> I know you're not saying that, Alec, but uh, I think it's important to say. And, and Mel says outsource. Yeah, if you can, um, mm -hmm. I'm actually interested. Alec. Do, do you do everything yourself or do you outsource some of it? Because uh, I, a, a couple of years ago, I, I, I did realize the joy of outsourcing certain things. Um, but yeah, I'm just interested. What do you do? For for the stuff on YouTube, yeah, it's all uh, just just me. Uh, I am I have been planning <laughs> to outsource some of it uh, because I'm looking to sort of scale up what I'm doing. I'm sort of coming out from just that two hour window in the morning. Um, I'm actually looking to change my workflow a little bit to start batching stuff because it is it is more efficient than you know doing things one at a time than to actually to actually batch some together. Um, the last few months, I wasn't doing one a day at all. In fact, this last month, I've only done my, my lives. But up until my sort of one year uh, anniversary, if you like, <laughs> the last uh, few months of it, I just became really busy with lots of other things in the the other things that I was doing. Um, and so what I want to do is make sure that I am being consistent on YouTube. So I do want to start batching stuff up to continue with the sort of one a day, uh, but just have, you know, three or four weeks or a month of them in the can, as it were, ready to go out. Um, and so I'm looking to, yeah, sort of rearrange my, uh, my workflow, but as part of that as well, I do want to look at, you know, having people doing the stuff that I don't particularly like. I mean, my, my thumbnails are not that adventurous. They all look exactly the same, pretty much just changing the text. That's just by nature of, I don't have time to, to, to fit that in or I haven't made time for it. So getting somebody to try and do something a little bit more adventurous with, with my thumbnails would be one thing. Um, but then also, uh, potentially. At some of the videos, I do want to try and do some things where I just do a, a bit of minor editing, actually just editing out some of the the gaps because I do tend to waffle. You know, the I don't really get negative comments on the channel, uh, but when I do, of the the three or four that I've got, it's kind of like, oh, this guy drones on and on <laughs> that sort of stuff because <laughs> I do tend to, uh, you know, if I if I feel like I'm missing something, then as I'm doing now, pretty much, I'll tend to just you know maybe waffle on a little bit more than I should. So it'd be interesting to just do a test of um, removing some of that and seeing what effect that has on the uh, the videos. <laughs> That's really interesting. And I think with, with your your channel, I, I have to admit, like when I when I first came across you, I saw some of your videos are like an hour, two hours long. And I thought, oh, I don't know if I can yeah. watch that. Um, because I suppose at that stage, I wasn't really that, I suppose I didn't know you. I didn't know the content. I wasn't really in, invested in your content um, at that stage. But um I think then I, um, I think that once I'd, I'd consumed some of your, your shorter contents, cause you've got stuff that's under 10 minutes and, and like 15 minute stuff. Mm -hmm. Then I realized actually this guy knows his stuff. Then I was willing to invest in like half hour and the yeah. hour long ones. So I think it's important yeah. on your channel. I, I'm sure you'd agree with this, that you have different lengths of videos. Like don't just put on half hour, hour videos because that's quite a lot for people who don't know yep. you to invest. Um, sure. So yeah, I, I think that's I think that's um, important. Now Mel says I teach in the evenings, definitely more productive in the mornings after the school run. So that's it's it's working out when your productive time is. And mm -hmm. I think if I could get up early, I think I would be productive. But the problem I have is that my office is is kind of quite close to the kids. Um, so I think you you have to. Uh, just work out what's best for you. Uh, Martin says, I think your thumbnails look great. So there you go. That, you know, I, I think maybe that's that perfectionism, Alec. You know, you... you... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not beating myself up about them, but they do... Um, they, so I had one particular style of thumbnail because I, I just had a Photoshop file with... I took a load of silly pictures of myself, you know, doing the old uh, YouTube face. <sighs> that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, took a load of those pictures and made uh, made all my thumbnails with this same template and just changed the text basically. So they were all, there was, you know, I'd occasionally put an image or something out on there if I was talking about a particular product, but they all look the same for the first, I would say, 150, 200 days. Then I decided that I was going to change it and I didn't really change it that much, but I just changed the, the color of them because I thought it looked better. Um, 
but then when I've looked at the analytics on, I've done a, a split testing using TubeBuddy, uh, actually in almost all cases, split testing my old style against my new style, the new style, which I thought looked a little bit fresher and bolder and like stood out more, uh, they've actually underperformed. So it shows what, how much I know. <laughs> so it's that yeah. kind of thing. I want to, I want to test it. The other thing that um, I've had some feedback about is that it's not easily because they all look pretty much the same, albeit, you know, the style might look you know, okay, um, because they all look pretty much the same. It's hard to see, like, is this one I've seen before kind of thing. Um, so uh, it's it's not so much that I'm really dissatisfied with them as such, but I would definitely like to play around with something a little bit more, uh, a little bit different, a little bit more adventurous and just see what happens. Because I'm all about, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the analytics <laughs> and split testing yeah. and trying things out. So um, yeah, that's the, the engineer in me, I think, you know, I need to figure well, out. Well, that's, that's that. good. I think, yeah, I I probably don't look at the analytics as much as I should do. Maybe I should outsource that and get somebody to look at the yeah. analytics and tell me all about it. But that's probably, yeah, I probably should do it myself. But that no, that's really interesting. And I think with 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 YouTube, um, or with any kind of thumbnails, I think uh, it's important to to keep them probably fairly simple. And I think this is a problem that I've got. I I I had um so I got a designer to go into. I I use Easel, which is like Canva. Um, to create lots of templates. I, I think they work well for like Facebook Live and possibly LinkedIn Live, but for YouTube, there's just too much text on them. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I've, I put the whole title on the thumbnail and really I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't put the, because the, cause the text is already there. So I think, yeah, outsourcing, getting some help. I'm not a graphic designer. Uh, and even if you, I know, Alec, you, you, you are, a you have done graphic design, but it's probably something that uh, you could get somebody else to do. So it's outsourcing yeah. is, is um, yeah, something we, sh we should definitely do. So uh, we've talked about your process uh, of creating um, pre-recorded video. You just, you, you, so there's the planning stage um, and then you, you set everything up in uh, Ecamm Live uh, and you press record and you get started. If you mess up your words at the beginning, you can restart it quickly and you pretty much once you've got started you're on you're on fire and you just go for it and if you do make the odd little slip i suppose you can add, edit that later um and there's a even there's a, a cool little thing on the stream deck which i think you've done a video on where you can even do timestamps as well i've got that set up and i always forget to press the button so that's i don't know how, do, you, do you do that <laughs> i do forget to press it yeah as, as my main use case for that was it always going to be for my my live streams actually um but i have found that i've kept forgetting to press it and then if you forget to press it at one point it, unless you press the timestamp at every point then you've you've got to try and figure out well did that how many other points did i miss <laughs> so I've, i'm still working on being more uh using that in a better way than i have been <laughs> i know it's it's really annoying because like today um so what the way i was going to use it i when i have a guest on because like, often my guests will share something like really amazing and uh, i want to press the button so i know like for repurposing for later um if i'm going to take a little mm -hmm. snippet and i keep forgetting to press it i was thinking about well maybe if i get one of the elgato pedals that'll um that'll make it easy but that's just an excuse i just want to buy more tech so let's <laughs> let's talk about live so uh so so you you treat your pre-recorded videos in a sense like live you, you do it live mm -hmm. as if it were live but it isn't live i'm interested to know how you use live as well because Tell us a bit about how you use live video with Ecamm, where you go live to, how often you do it, why you do it. Um, and uh, yeah, just really interested to know what um, your live strategy. Right. So the um, the for my channel, I do a weekly uh, live stream as well. And as I said earlier, that this is kind of uh, more me sort of sharing my my journey, if you like. So it's talking about kind of the stuff I've been doing on the channel as opposed to, you know, a, a live tutorial, although they do often end up being, you know, some sort of sort of tutorial. If somebody asks a question, then I'll go into stuff. Uh, it was a case of practicing the, the process even more because the recorded stuff, you still, uh, you know, you still always can press that go again button. So uh, doing something live, I think is, uh, is good to sort of stretch myself. Uh, I have done uh, public speaking before on stages, uh, but doing a live stream is somewhat different when you're trying to control everything as well. So you're not just getting up there and talking, uh, but you do have to, uh, you know, manage other different things that are going on with, you know, different scenes and things like that. Uh, I, it's something that I want to get better at. And so I'm always looking for ways to improve it. So for example, the, um, 
the last live stream I did actually was about the uh, the Rodecaster Pro 2. So I'd also queued up like a load of different B-roll clips so that as I was doing like a full rundown of uh, all the updates for the Rodecaster, then I was sort of feeding in B-roll. And that's something that I hadn't really done before. But I, I, I was practicing that live because I also want to feed that into my videos to sort of make my even my recorded videos have more of a look of an edited video by incorporating that you know b-roll but just doing it actually live by you know pressing a stream deck button and you know playing a video as i'm talking over the top of it so mm. i like the the live streams are for me to sort of practice practice new things as well really in, in front of everybody <laughs> <laughs> well that's a, i think that's a really good um reason to go live it's not i mean what a lot of people will talk about it's to engage with your audience build community and i i, I I assume you you're not against doing oh, that. I mean that that's important. Oh, stuff it's, as well. it's certainly yeah, sure. It's uh, certainly all of that as well. <laughs> but but I think uh, from a personal reason, um, I, I think I'm with you on this. It's it's a great way to improve because there is that pressure. Uh, like today, you know, uh, I I've been away for like um, I've been away for a week and I haven't gone live probably for about a week and a half, and already like in that space of time. I'm a little bit rusty. I'm thinking, oh, what do I do now? And I've, and I've not got all my tech working. So having that regularity and practicing is really important. It also means that you, you're probably less likely to stumble over your words because you're practicing. Mm -hmm. uh, would, would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's all, yeah, all practicing the, uh, the process. Uh, I, it's also, mm -hmm. I mean, you talked about engaging with the community. It's great to get feedback like that. So I'll often say, uh, I'm thinking of doing this. What, what do you all think? <laughs> and get some, uh, get yeah. some input. Um, so yeah, it's definitely uh, good from that perspective. And I do do, you know, I do uh, training courses, but then I also use Ecamm for uh, like on Zoom calls and things like that in business. Uh, so it's all just about, you know, the the stuff that I'm doing live on the, uh, the the live stream It is actually not that much different to, you know, doing a live presentation in a business context with Ecamm just going into Zoom instead of going into, uh, you know, YouTube. So it's 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 practicing that that aspect as well. It's all about sort of presentation skills at the end of the day. Definitely, definitely agree with that. Uh, we've got LBC Branding is in the house watching on YouTube. Great to see you. And Thank Business you Growth go. Ready watching on YouTube says, I have invested hours in thumbnail design and color theory, which may be overkill. Well, there's sometimes, <laughs> there is a danger, isn't there, that we can almost know too, well, know too much or uh, overthink things. So like, how does overthinking coming into this? I mean, this is part of kind of... Um, being a recovering perfectionist, isn't it, Alec? Uh, do you tend well, to the, overthink things? I mean, how, how, how do you balance that, I suppose, is the question. <laughs> I, I definitely overthink things. <laughs> that is part of my, uh, my lifelong issue. <laughs> um, but the, the thing about spending hours on, you know, thumbnail design and stuff like that, I'm all for doing that if you can uh, ac accurately sort of measure it. And that's what we can do with uh, the analytics. Now, I'm not somebody who sort of, I don't get up and check my subscriber numbers every day and be like, you know, oh, what's going on or anything like that. Um, but when it comes to things like thumbnails and stuff that I have actually got control over, um, then doing the split test, for example, so I use TubeBuddy that allows me to run a split test on a particular video where it's going to serve the same video, but with two different thumbnails. And it will tell me the click through rate because at the end of the day, uh, you're making YouTube videos because you know we want people to watch them and if we're looking to build youtube and everything else we're doing as a business which i am ultimately um then you want a higher number of people who see your th thumbnail to click on it so when i'm seeing the analytics from the split tests and i'm seeing that uh four percent clicked on this thumbnail but five percent clicked on that thumbnail some people have this mindset where they think oh well, it's only it's only one percent difference it doesn't make it doesn't make that much difference really uh, but actually going from four percent to five percent is a 25 percent increase in traffic from that little change that you've made on your your thumbnail so it's it's the relative change from one to the other that is the key there and it does have a massive impact. I've seen it myself just from my my great new thumbnail design that I did that didn't actually work. <laughs> it was actually worse than what I was doing before. Um, and so I'm all for spending time on doing things like that that are gonna increase traffic. It's the same with the uh, the retention. So I always used to have a little um, uh, little intro that I did on my videos. So when after I've done my speaking intro, then there was this little animation of my, my logo. Um, I came to realize, having spoken to much wiser people than myself on these things, uh, Doc Rock being one of them, <laughs> um, you know, people aren't coming to your videos to watch the uh, the little 
animation uh, animated intro uh, and so i've cut that out now and i've noticed that i've had a much higher retention where people are watching the first few seconds and then they're not dropping off they're actually you know the engagement staying for longer um so I'm, I'm tempted one of the things that i'd get you know outsource would be in youtube you can actually edit the videos that your existing videos in youtube so I've been through to some of my more popular videos and actually edited out that little title sequence just so that it goes smoothly from my little intro straight into the content. So um, mm. I'm all for spending time on things like that and analyzing it. <laughs> That's really interesting. And I can definitely tell your engineering background when you're, you're talking about going from 4 to 5% is actually a 25% increase. So that, I mean, it's kind of weird the way 4 or 5%, it doesn't sound much of a like, difference, but when you mm -hmm. put it that way, it, it is. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool. It's, it's working out what the priorities are because going back and editing videos like that, um, yes, I know you're thinking about outs outsourcing it, but that sounds like a lot of work, but mm -hmm. overall that could make quite a big difference to your yep. uh, YouTube channel. Now with, with live. So I know this, um, the, the live part of it is yes, you're not, you're, uh, you do see the importance of community and things like that. Um, but a lot of it is to do with your, your just improving. And I, I would definitely think that's a great way of doing it. And that's one of the reasons why I do live video is actually is to create, it kind of forces me to create the content. I love interacting with people live. So um, I love the community aspects of it too. And I think the two go together really, much, really highly, but it, it is hard at the moment. Um, with live video, it's not like what it was like f uh, three, four years ago, but with the number of, um, well, just it's basically down to Facebook um, in particular, but also YouTube not pushing, uh, sorry, LinkedIn, I mean, not pushing uh, um, live as much out to to your followers. Um, have you found that? And have you got any kind of tips for us to increase the number of people watching us live? I suppose the reason I'm asking you this, Alec, is that you have uh, a YouTube video that says you have a lot of people watching your pre-recorded video and sometimes that live element can kind of skew things or get in the way um, of, of yep. those numbers. So I'm kind of interested in your take on this one. So in terms of the other platforms, when I, um, when I started my channel, I uh, signed up to Restream and I thought, let me just stream to everywhere. Surely that's better to stream to everywhere. Uh, then some other great advice from Doc is that um, you don't necessarily want to actually segregate the audience. So I ended up just focusing on YouTube. Um, I've only just recently sort of rekindled my LinkedIn, uh, I have to say, that, that I hadn't really done anything with for probably four or five years or something like that. So I haven't really started streaming to, you, to LinkedIn. Um, that's something that I'm looking to do as I sort of ramp up the, the content over the next uh, few months. We'll be doing some dedicated stuff on LinkedIn as well as the stuff that I'm doing on YouTube. I'm also in the Amazon Influencer Program, so I'll be doing some separate live streams to, um, uh, to, to Amazon as well. Now, what I noticed with my, uh, my live streams, another part of them for the, the ones that I've been doing on YouTube was to, uh, as well as you know, get feedback from the community, it was about, about me sort of sharing my findings as well. But I did notice that uh, the, you know, the, the typical people that come to the live stream is quite low. I do get probably 10 times more watch it on the replay than uh, are actually at the live stream. Um, but then I was, you know, realized uh, I, I can I contribute a lot of the things that I do to Doc Rock, actually, because I get lots of great advice directly from him. <laughs> um, but one of them was making sure that the live streams are friendly for people who are watching on the restream uh, on the, 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 the replay, I should say. So one of the things that I tend to do is it be kind of like me just chatting with people, you know, the, the, the people that are in the, the, the chats, you know, the, the community um, for, you know, an hour and a half is usually what my live streams go for. Uh, so it wasn't necessarily well organized for the people who are coming to watch the replay for some, you know, interesting and useful content. So what I've tried to do now is be more conscious about giving some, uh, you know, a, a clearly structured beginning to it. And then the sort of uh, the chat and the, uh, you know, things like that can come more towards the end. So I've tried to be more conscious about uh, doing that with the the overall structure of it. That makes perfect sense. I, lo I love that. Um, and something I've been thinking about is I have my little chit chat thing at the beginning, um, but actually maybe potentially putting it at the end makes much more sense because live viewers take some time. I mean, it, to, be to begin with, when, when I, we first like, went live today, we had 
zero people watching it because like it takes time. And then we had two, I think we had two people watching. I mean, link. unfortunately, we can't see how many people are watching on LinkedIn and, and some of the other channels. But so it's so the numbers right. are kind of skewed. But uh, but, you know, we, we've gone up to over 10 people watching, excluding LinkedIn, because I know we've got quite a few people watching on LinkedIn. So that's not included there. So it, it, so actually kind of waiting to the end is probably makes more sense to have that little bit but and, and focusing on the replay bit at the beginning. Uh, and then you don't even have to really trim the video because I used to trim the video. So mm -hmm. I trim that beginning bit off. But the problem on YouTube you could probably tell I overthink these things too. Like if you do that, then you kind of get rid of the um, the, the live, live chat. chat replay, mm -hmm. which is kind of annoying. Yeah, Doc Doc is Doc Rock is is amazing. I, he's he's I need to have him on the show again because he he's so full of all these little tips um, that we we we've, we've all uh, I suppose brought into our into our own systems. Um, so thanks for that, Alec. That's that's uh, some good insight, even if part of it was from from Doc. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. So that that so what what is next for you? Uh, I know that you have uh, you've just had your anniversary, your first year anniversary. Um, it's been amazing to see how much you've achieved in that year. You have just been so prolific. Um, it, you've had a bit of a bit of a break, which I think you deserve um, because you have been putting so much into it. But what is the next? What are the next goals and the next stage? You know, in your. Um, a bit to kind of uh, counteract that recovering perfectionism, but you know, strive towards um, perfection. Um, what is the next thing for you? Um, it's it's more the same, uh, but just you know, continuing the process of uh, of growth really. Um, so continuing what I was doing on YouTube and keeping that sort of content the same. But then, as I mentioned, I'll be I'll be doing more stuff that is uh, more tailored to business on uh, LinkedIn. So I do offer consultations through my uh, my website to help people and the the typical people that I talk to on consultation calls want help with one of two things it's either the ecam live and creating videos and stuff like that or it is the um you know the automation and becoming more efficient in their work so there's there's two kind of distinct groups really so the linkedin stuff i see has been uh, uh doing specific content for linkedin potentially live streams that are you know dedicated to that stuff and then the uh, the youtube would just be sort of more of the same but then on amazon that's going to be more uh product orientated for obvious reasons <laughs> so i really love all the gear in the tech i don't want to turn my youtube chat channel into you know just another uh youtube channel where they're talking about making youtube videos <laughs> but actually on amazon that's you know the ideal place for me to um you know let my tech addiction <laughs> run riot and uh, do a couple of shows on there. So we're doing one that's all about using various different bits of tech and tech products and things like that. So more kind of tutorial styles, but about the uh, the actual tech itself. Uh, and then there'll also be one that will be just pure product reviews as well. Uh, and then I'm also looking to do a an interview show, which will be about people who are, you know, using all these devices and, uh, you know, live streaming. Uh, and so that will be on Amazon, but then also on on LinkedIn. So coming from a sort of business point of view, the the tech that we use in our businesses for communications and so on. That's a so, huge uh, amount. Yeah, just more, yeah. more of the same. <laughs> That's a huge <laughs> amount of stuff, but you know, have, having a plan and processing is so important. And I want to, I want to come back to what you're saying about, you know, multi-streaming because yeah, a lot of people think that multi-streaming is the way forwards so that, you know, it's going live everywhere. Um, but yeah, it doesn't always work, you know, and, and for this kind of show, I think it makes sense. I've actually cut down the number of places that I go live to. I do go live mm -hmm. to YouTube, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn and Twi Twitter. I, and I don't really know why I bother with Twitter, but um, I, I do have quite a big, um, uh, I do have a bit of engagement on Twitter, but I, I can't unfortunately see the comments. So uh, that's a bit of a downer. Uh, but I think when it comes to certain things like for, for Amazon, it makes sense, I think, just to, to go live to Amazon because it's product centered. It doesn't really make sense to go yep. live elsewhere. And it sounds mm -hmm. like that's what you're doing. In, in one sense, you're making more work for yourself, but I think it's going to be more... Um, you're catering, you're gearing it much more towards that audience. And I'm very excited <clears> about Amazon, Amazon Live. Uh, you know, I've had, I've been in it, um, well, it was called an influencer, isn't it? The, uh, been an influencer on Amazon for a while, but I've not really, I've gone live there um, a few times, but uh, something I'm going to be uh, spending a lot more time investing in as well. Um, and Doc Rock is saying, stop blaming me. Well, we do. We blame you for <laughs> everything, Doc. You, you're, you know, anyway, there we go. Um, 
<laughs> business growth ready says ian you have one billion viewers on linkedin in some multi metaverse maybe <laughs> well maybe yes yeah, the metaverse that's web 3.0 we've had we've talked about that that's a whole other thing which we're not going to get into today but we have talked about that on the show <laughs> that's the other thing um cool uh, it, well thank you alec it's been great to have you on the show um we're going to finish a little bit early um today just a few minutes early because I'm off to um, Scarborough, sunny Scarborough. So I'm, I'm sure you'll be uh, very jealous of me, Alec. You know, you in your like beautiful Thailand <laughs> sunshine, and I'm going up up north to, to Scarborough for a couple of days. Um, but um, yeah, I've got to get all the, the kids ready for that. But thank you so much, Alec. It's been great to have you on the show. Uh, Katie says we will. We always blame you, Doc, uh, and it's true. Uh, but uh, <laughs> if you want to find out more about Alec, um, uh, then do check out his YouTube channel, which is Take One Tech. You also have a, a fantastic website. Uh, if you go to uh, takeonetech.io, I love the .io, and you've got <laughs> um, all your, you've got your community, uh, you've got uh, your courses. T- tell us a little bit about what you you've got there, and you've even got you've even got a, a Discord uh, server as well, which is all very very cool. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, the on the the site I've got uh, I do icon packs for Stream Deck, so they're all in the store. And then I've got a couple of courses. So I've, I did a the Ecamm Live Masterclass, which is all about how to use Ecamm for all of the stuff we've been talking about today. And then at the end of this week, I will be adding in my Zoom Masterclass as well. I'm taking part in. There's a great free event hosted by Ecamm later this week, which is their Zoom Workshop. So I'll be uh, there at, uh, as one of the, the hosts of that. Uh, three days of uh, great content, and then there'll be a weekend workshop as well. Uh, so definitely check that out. That's ecamtv slash Zoom. <laughs> so um, yeah, you can go and uh, s- sign up there. But then I'll be also launching my uh, Zoom masterclass at that course as well. And that will be uh, available on my website too. Definitely check that out because Alex is... Um content and uh, is is absolutely amazing if you want to learn quickly uh, and learn everything about it the, the detail as well is just fantastic so thank you for that alec do do check that out and have you uh, carelessly scattered yourself across all the socials as well where's the best place that people can uh, follow you or stalk you in a nice way on on the socials <laughs> Uh, yeah, all all of the socials, <laughs> LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, wherever, uh, all as uh, Take One Tech, you'll be able to uh, find me there. In fact, actually, uh, I take that back. Twitter is Take One Tech underscore because someone else had got to do that one. Uh, oh, before. that's annoying. Never mind. <laughs> I know it is, isn't it? It is. Yeah. But if you search for Take One Tech, you'll you'll find Alec on there, um, definitely. Yeah. And uh, Katie didn't know you were hosting hosting that, so uh, that's awesome. When when does when's that uh, the the Zoom thing happening? <laughs> It's uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And um, yeah, it's ecamtv slash Zoom is, I think, the link. Just let me double check that. But uh, yeah, there's uh, there's Doc speaking, uh, Adrian Salisbury, Mr. Ecam himself. <laughs> and then there's uh, Kat Mulverhill, who's uh, amazing as well. Uh, Yang Keck is talking about uh, doing presentations. And then there's also, uh, who else is there? Uh, the folks from uh, Liminal. So Andy, he, who Liminal created zoom iso which allows you to basically pull out individual feeds from zoom so that then you can use them in other applications like ecamm uh, so he's doing a, a full session there as well i'm missing someone else kirk nugent talking about audio as well so it's going to be a yeah a great oh, awesome. uh, great event sounds amazing yeah you, you, you're always in danger if you start mentioning names that you have to then remember everyone so <laughs> exactly i yeah. was very impressed yeah. that you went down that route but uh, it, you, you did yeah. it so well done <laughs> yeah. that's that's oh, and david so, da- david paskin the uh, Torah tech guy as well I'm, oh I'm, cool and you wouldn't well, if you've missed somebody else, I'm sure they'll forgive you. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, so I presume there's going to be a, a replay of that. So, um, so for it's, pod- it's all live on uh, live on Facebook, uh, uh, live on uh, YouTube. So it's on right. the Ecamm YouTube channel. So you'll find them all all there as well. Yeah. So if you're listening to the podcast, uh, don't worry. Just go to the Ecamm uh, YouTube channel, and you will be able to do all of that. Uh, Martin on LinkedIn is saying, "We'll try and catch the Zoom gig. Great lineup. It sounds amazing." Um, I'm I'm probably going to have to watch the replay myself because we're uh, away for a couple of days, but I can't wait to be learning more about that. Well, thank you, Alec. It's been awesome. It's been great. I mean, I can't believe we actually haven't spoken to each other in person yet, but and hopefully at some point we'll actually see each other in like face to face at some kind of event somewhere. Uh, I look forward to that. Yeah. Prob- mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Alec. It's been great to have you on the show. Well, we are out of time, um, unfortunately, uh, but that's just the way things things are. Um, time just moves so quickly. 
Thank you so much for watching. Do check out the podcast at iag.me forward slash podcast. And until next time, I encourage you to level up your impact, authority, and profits through the power of Confident Live Video. See you soon. Bye. Thanks for watching the Confident Live Marketing Show with Ian Anderson Gray. Make sure you subscribe at iag.me forward slash podcast so you can continue to level up your impact, authority, and profits through the power of live video. And until next time, to the loo. loo.